So you're for a UBI, um, which I'm for a UBI too. I, I support it. But for me, there's kind of an asterisk there because I, I think that one of the things that really needs to accompany a UBI is um, extensive rent control and just other price ceilings. So it's not, okay, people have this sum of money with no actual exchange going on. We're just going to pump up the rent however much, and we're just going to pump up this however much. So I think there needs to be some accompaniment there. It can't just be a UBI with nothing else. And I'm also, and you know, some people are in this camp, some people aren't, but I support both a federal jobs guarantee and a UBI because guess what? We can afford them both. Yeah, for sure we can. Thoughts? Yeah, no, for sure we can. And I don't think the two are mutually exclusive at all. I, I think don't either. A, a lot of people make it out like they are. And, and that's never really made sense to me. And I've always been like, because they're like, oh, you're for a federal jobs guarantee. So you're not for UBI. And it's like, no, I'm for both. I'm yeah. for both. I just want them both unrolled properly. Yeah, whatever we can help the people with, because in terms of what is going to happen faster, we don't know at this point. And and I think it's really working on an integrative, holistic, working together in different ways in, in different areas. And so with that being said, I think it ties back to your question of, well, um, before I go back to the first question, your second question of UBI, like, yeah, it would be great. There's going to be a time, even my legal industry is being automated right now. There's going to be more attorneys without jobs and $200,000 in law school loan debt, more and more. Um, and, and so what are we going to be doing about that? What are we going to be doing about the jobs that are already being taken away? Um, and so we do need to really deal with reality and not just bury our heads into the sand with that. And and there's going to be a time where a basic income is, is going to be even more. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not needed now because we're in a 35 plus year income wage stagnation, but 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 in the sense of we don't the basic income, whatever whichever amount it's going to be right now, realistically, is not going to be enough for us. And so we do need jobs with living wages. The people need help with that. And so I there's no way it should be mutually exclusive. But then tied with your question on UBI, Yes, there is the concern of, hey, what what if landlords just raise the rent? And that's why I think that's the thing that a lot of people need to realize, elected officials and candidates who are running right now. What is the most that we spend our rent and salary on? I mean, not rent. What is the most we spent? I gave it away. What is the most we spent our salary and income on? It's on rent and mortgage, a majority of our income. We have 40 plus million renting households in America. Over 20 million of them are paying over a third of their income on rent over 12 plus million and these are outdated numbers these are numbers before like a year two year old numbers and and 12 plus million of them are paying more than half of their income it's a lot worse now and so what are we doing why isn't why and i'm and i'm and i'm and i hope trump does not win and i'm not and trump should not win but but why is it that even um our, our own presidential candidates aren't really putting a focus on housing as much as they should be because housing is a human right why, why aren't we talking about that? And and the fact that for us here in Los Angeles, housing is the lack of affordable housing is a grim reality that is forcing a lot of people to live unhoused on the streets. And so coupled with that, we need to pass a homes guarantee. Um, it, and it's already a bill sitting in the house drafted by Representative Omar and in there. And it, it was um, it, it was spearheaded by People's Action and and a great, great base um, from which it sprung forth from but a homes guarantee would would protect it would it has many different plans whether it be building out social housing units um putting uh adding uh, improvements to current federal housing where 70 billion plus dollars need to be improved in, in in federal housing but hasn't been um but in addition to that there will be a lot more tenant protections as well why don't we have a tenant's bill of rights why aren't we talking about how how rent is paid and, and the conditions and and things that tenants must have? Because right now it's a completely unequal bargaining power that the landlords have. And, and I'm not saying that all landlords are bad. There's a lot of good landlords. But but in the sense of our tenants, where we're not thinking about our tenant res our constituents when they're also the majority and they could be getting help with that. And so um, setting rent control, um, setting rent rent standards, setting a tenants' bills of rights. These are things that we need to talk about and to help pass and integrate when we're passing basic income, when we're passing these different intersectional policies. Um, so, so everything goes hand in hand, Ron, and, and they all must be carefully done.
So it's not just rolling out this and, and disregarding everything else. But well, you know, the one thing you never hear is you never hear and, and, and you know, of course, I'm not going to like overgeneralize and say like, oh, all landlords are bad. Of course, I have no basis to make a statement like that. But, you know, you never hear a, a lot of the basic disinformation being squelched by anybody on the other side of it. I have yet to hear one landlord in my life, and I hope maybe they're out there somewhere that says, hey, you know what? Rent control doesn't mean I don't have a financially sustainable venture anymore. It doesn't mean I lose. That's not what rent control is. That's mm -hmm. wrong. Rent control actually leads to a better society for everybody. Mm -hmm. You never hear landlords saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, and then for those in California, there's obviously state measures um, um, concerning that, that you can vote on um, 21 um, and, and, and wherever you live, find, find, look, look for the issues that, that would bring so much change and meaningful impact and positive change to your communities and help empower. Because I really think that um, the government's job and our job as the people when we're voting is to find find and vote for candidates, platforms, measures that will help our people thrive equally and, and fairly in all areas. And, and, and how do we do that? Um, and instead of, instead of, instead of allowing the suffering of our people continue. So, so yeah, I yeah, see, this, agree. this is where, this is where I'm a little, uh, I'm, I'm a little more radical, David, and you don't have to agree with this because if you do, it might squash your chances of winning, but I actually think we need to, I think that private property should just straight up be illegal. I, I think that, and and when I say that, I don't mean I, I don't mean you don't have possession of something. I don't mean this is my shirt. You know what I mean is that housing it, it should be designated a human right, and the only way to accomplish that is to just eliminate private property as we know it. I know that's not a change I'm going to see in my lifetime. I know that, but. I think that's the only way to really get there. Can we do other things to make it better in the interim? Of course we can. And I really want to see those things happen. But I think as a society, we are just so far gone that that's, that's the only way we could ever guarantee housing for everyone. That's like the only way. You don't have to agree. You don't have to agree. Because if you do, <laughs> your opponent will grab this soundbite if you agree with me. This is well, why I can never run for office. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the comment that I will is that, make is that is, your ride? Do you have to go? <laughs> no. The what comment. You do? The the comment that I will make is Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine, one of one of the early leaders of our country, um, he he actually thought um, he actually thought that the the whole idea of land ownership was a little absurd because before before whoever came over to to what we know as mainland America right now, um, we had different communities already living here with our different indigenous people and, and communities there. And and before them, the land was already here. So this private land ownership was was absurd for him. And so he he developed and championed this idea of, well, I don't know if he developed it, but he championed this idea of a land endowment tax fund where, into which uh, landowners would pay essentially what would fund a UBI and that UBI would then be distributed to all Americans. And so with that being said, like those, what are the different ways where we can think outside of the box and, and really help each other while, while other people perhaps might want to build their own or, or whatnot. And so, um, so it's not something that is not, it's not, it's, it's not something, it's not a first time thing that I'm hearing Ron. So, so no need to think that you're completely, like off the charts or anything, but um, in terms of like, and, and there's different ways we can talk about zoning policies and, and figure out how do we remove exclusionary zoning policies and allow for, for, for more affordable housing to even be possible, uh, to allow for more, com uh, to, to focus our communities on being more pedestrian focused instead of being car focused, because that's, disadvantage that's a huge disadvantage for different communities um, who aren't able to, to, to have the finances to, to, to do a single car ride type of trip for everything that they need. Um, and so, so yeah, so, I mean, you've kind of dipped into different intersectional issues that, that are related to that. So I can see why. So you mentioned a green new deal. I mean, one of the things where we're talking about the intersections, uh, you know, in particular, the intersection of a UBI and a jobs guarantee, a real green new deal is going to come with a whole sea of jobs, pun intended, because we need to save those C's. But uh, so so speak to your thoughts on a Green New Deal. 
Yeah, uh, well, a Green New Deal <clears throat> right now, um, in terms of it's not just and and of obviously saving the environment, reversing climate change, really moving towards electrical grid, um, moving to carbon free as, as fast as we can, and and really laying down the infrastructure of how we can move forward. Because right now, everything that we're doing is inefficient. Yes, it, it'll cost it'll cost a chunk, but what we're doing right now and what we'll continue doing will cost even more. Um, the damage that we're doing with our fo uh, the forest fires and, and climate change disasters that we have that that costs millions and billions in, in terms of in terms of addressing and responding to or or even with um, heat islands here in Los Angeles, we have so many of them. And, and yet we don't even have any cooling centers that are available for our senior population or for our other communities or for our unhoused communities. We're not even focusing on that. Or, and, and so if we're not even focusing on that, at least we can be focusing on different ways. And that means ensuring that we have infrastructure and buildings. And, and the only reason why I'm looking out of the window, Ron, is because I'm looking at the buildings and it's like, these no, it's because those these sirens buildings are coming not... for you. <laughs> we know what's really going on. These, these buildings are not, they're, they need to be more environmentally friendly and sustainable and, and keeping our, our cooling in. And, and there's ways that we can do it. And so a Green New Deal is definitely um, what where we need to be moving and pushing towards and fighting for and um, in all areas. And, and despite Biden being against fracking or whatever, um, I, I, I mean, being, being for fracking and not being against it. Um, I mean, despite that, like, we still need to push harder. I, I feel like this administration will be a good transition administration for us to finally be able to have time to think, uh, finally have time to re recollect our thoughts and to be able to now strategize of what, what we need to continue pushing forward for. Um, so that's something that I'll be still continuing to be fighting for and, and in ways of, of, again, how can we, while we, while we fight for a Green New Deal and fight for a massive change, what are some other ways we can still get there too? Um, there's bills like, I don't know the exact title. I think it's the Carbon and Dividend Exchange or whatever act. Um, but it's it's like things, bills like that, where you're charging, where you're implementing a carbon dividend, a carbon tax um, to, to encourage and move us away from carbon and using that money and funding families and communities. That's another way to fund a UBI type of uh, resource and, and allocation of funding towards our families and communities. And so um, in, in different ways, it's it's definitely something that we need to be pushing for and fighting for. And when you're voting in the election, if you haven't already voted, look where your look for where your candidate starts on that and, and see if your candidate has funding from that industry. Um, because if they do, then odds are that they're not really pushing or fighting for it. And it's just another, thing listed on their platform to get reelected or to get elected. Well, so. and it, it's got to happen from the bottom up big time. I mean, you know, you, you know, you can talk about, I mean, you got to recognize things for what they are. Joe Biden whole, his whole like, Oh, by 2050, you got to sniff that out for what it really is. And what it really is, is just saying, Hey, I'm going to make the next generation deal with it. When you're saying 2050, that's way too late. That's way too little, way too late. He knows that scientists mm -hmm. knows that. He's just saying, you know what, I will at least acknowledge this is a real thing that something Trump won't do. I'll at least acknowledge it's real, but I'm just going to, uh, someone else could deal with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to take a movement from the ground up to say that's not good enough, mm -hmm. to say that is not enough. We need a real Green New Deal and fracking mm -hmm. needs to be banned. It, mm -hmm. needs to, it needs to be done so. And I know that we don't have that leadership at the federal and state level right mm -hmm. now. We don't even have that here in California. Mm -hmm. You know, Gavin Newsom, he, he's smiling. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's smiling, holding an electric car charge. Hey, we're all going to be on electric cars by 2035. And, and that's good. I'm for that. That's not a bad thing, of course. But simultaneously, he's approving 40 fracking wells. A groundswell from the ground up needs to say, this can't continue. Mm -hmm. The lip service isn't good enough. Being the Ministry of Appeasement on Twitter is not good enough. And that's why we mm -hmm. need to elect people-powered candidates who are actually going to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and 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 that's very of the utmost importance. And, and I know that a lot of candidates, even in the establishment, um, I mean, those who are incumbents, they're they're just signing on their names because it's politically expedient. It's 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 you're 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 part of the cool 
crowd and and you want to stay in there but they're really not fighting for it they don't really care about it um it wasn't until i know that uh local grassroots groups here like sunrise movement la really pushed um officials like my opponent to to co-sponsor and then they did um and so i think it's really it's from a ground up bottoms up and this is where it's not it doesn't just our action doesn't just end up voting but it continues even past it so for those like yes this it's great that we're voting and and i i'm i i'm so happy for those who casted their vote for the first time or who are voting again but we we need to show up whether it be at different protests whether it be at different forums discussions tweeting engaging in discussions online um tuning into platforms like this and and really increasing the awareness because i think right now a lot of people they're kept in this harsh cycle of life of trying to make ends meet that they're not able to have the time to think about things and to, and to do things and i'm not saying and and that's that's the reality of it all and so it's our job to really inform each other to connect with each other to talk about these things with our families and communities um, because our government's not talking about it and they won't talk about it unless we make them talk about it um and so yeah, it's very important and and it's all interconnected again. I feel that the government controls people through poverty um, and and that's one of the ways we need to overcome it. And it's all intersectional as well. Um, who does climate change affect the most of those who are the poorest um, in reality as well? Um, even if you with tree shade here in California in, in Los Angeles, the richer neighborhoods have have the most tree shade in Los Angeles. And so or or and, and so in just every different way i think it's just very important for us to be aware of what's going on in different areas of our lives because politics is flushing the bathroom politics is when you turn on your light politics is when you don't know how to figure out how to pay rent or pay for your bills and so i think this reality is something that's hitting us more and more especially our generation because we have it worse than than the ones before again i'm not trying to be a debbie downer but but again, I'm I'm coming in saying no. Let's bring positive change. Well, no, and that's, that's what I'll be bringing to DC. So I mean, there's nothing wrong with. I, I don't think it makes you a Debbie Downer to you know point out realities when your overall message is we can fight this thing and we can win. Yeah, that's not being a Debbie Downer. That's just being honest about the task ahead. And yeah. and I think that's something that's uh, very much missing in our politics for a long list of reasons that we've really summarized in this interview, but yeah. there's, there's a being honest about the task ahead is gravely missing. And then when they decide to be quote unquote honest, they're not being honest. Whenever they, whenever they try to be quote Debbie Downers, they're just lying. We can't afford Medicare for all. That's just a lie. That's just mm -hmm. not true. Even, mm -hmm. even if you just uh, factor in the resources we already have, we spend more than Medicare for all will cost. We spend more per capita than any other developed yeah. country. And yeah. we have a higher mortality rate still. Regardless. Yes. So, so it's yeah. like, that's just a lie. Whenever they're saying, oh, we, we, can't, we can't supply Social Security. That's just a lie. They dip into mm -hmm. Social Security to fund other things. Mm -hmm. Whenever they, they rag on the Postal Service, that's just a lie. That's just yeah. a lie. Because guess what? It's not called the Postal Business. It's called the Postal Service. So mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter if they're not financially sustainable, which by the way, they actually are, that's a freaking lie too. But even if they weren't, it's a government service. As long as they're doing the service they're supposed to do, which they do, and as long as people are getting paid a salary, which they are, and who is getting those salaries? Americans, freaking Americans, who then go spend it. So mm -hmm. the only time they're ever honest about the task ahead is when they're lying, is when they're bullshitting. They're not honest in the way you were just honest, where you just mm -hmm. said, look, this is what's in, in front of us. It, it is it is a big task. It's a tall glass of water, pun mm -hmm. intended, because we need to save the water. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, like, like it, that's just being real. Yeah. I mean, that's just being authentic. Get your news on with Ron. Did you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron, don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make